Jalen Ramonde Green is a gliding, gracefully explosive 6'6 and 180 pound hybrid scoring wing from Merced, California. As in, Lord have Merced, this kid can go get a bucket. I'm not gonna apologize for that pun. Sometimes you just gotta stay moving, in rhythm. And speaking of rhythm, Jalen most certainly has it with the ball in his hands. He's hyper confident, poised. He also has zero exposure to live music. I've never been to a concert. Despite those positives, JG is already one of those polarizing players. His defenders are ferocious and his detractors are cautious. I don't think he's boom or bust, but it's possible that Green's upside could be the fault line of this draft, upon which seismic mistakes could be made. He could end up an electric scoring superstar, or he could be a pretty good, not great offensive weapon who needs to find the right fit. So which is it? Jalen Green, as the savvy and swervy 19-year-old that he is, decided this past year to take a big bag and forego college to play in the G League. There he posted an impressive season against grown men who wanted to embarrass him and NBA schemes that meant to challenge him. Through all of that, he scored 17.9 points per game on 61.3% true shooting and posted 2.8 assists, 4.1 rebounds, and two hairstyles per 36 minutes. Green was part of a hand-picked, developmentally focused professional team called G League Ignite, which featured other potential draft picks like Jonathan Kaminga, Isaiah Todd, who I'm higher on than most people, and Dacian Nix. The most obvious Jalen Green talking point is his physical build and athletic profile. These are cliche NBA draft buzzwords, but they really do apply. This guy's an intersection where spindliness, bendiness, and wiggle meet explosiveness and speed. Official measurements are hard to come by, but sources have green somewhere between 6'5 and 6'6 in shoes with a 6'8 wingspan, and the official G League website has him listed at about 178 pounds. Jalen strikes me as someone who could have been a high-impact wide receiver in another life. His 0-60 explosion isn't as forceful or as twitchy powerful as players like Derrick Rose, Russell Westbrook, Anthony Edwards, etc., but I'd guess that his top-end speed is up there with just about anybody. Jalen's second, third, and fourth steps are impressive because of how quickly he can get on the blocks like a sprinter. He's also very flexible and able to maneuver through tight spaces, whether it be attacking a driving lane or splitting a trap headed his way. It makes him difficult to contain. No prison can hold me. The on-ball defender here is daring Jalen to attack with his left hand, and he happily accepts. On step one, he lowers his head and shoulders to attack the paint, but watch steps two and three. Jalen banks like a NASCAR and gets his shin incredibly low and parallel to the ground as he churns forward with his torso flattened out in front of him. He looks out of control here, but he's not. Off the dribble in recent years, Jalen has frequently seemed like he was operating within controlled chaos and that volatility would flip-flop between helping and hurting himself. Luckily, while he can still get a little wild with it, I think he's improved lately in this sense, and I'm now to the point where I think Green has arguably the most shifty dribble separation ability in the draft. This downhill ability puts Jalen frequently in the position to make plays at the rim. Roughly a third of Jalen's attempts this season were within five feet of the rim, and despite his build, he was able to convert on 69.1% of those looks. That's nice, eh? Green frequently gets compared to big guards like Zach Levine, but to me, Green is athletically more in the lineage of Iverson, Morant, Although he is a wildly impressive leaper, Green is not doing much in the way of finishing through the chest of defenders at the rim and punching it on people. Not yet, anyway. But I mention those players specifically because he shares a trait with them that is essential for athletic skinny finishers to survive. I'm talking about three words that start with C. Contact, contortion, and control. Green is very comfortable with making a second decision once the initial rim protection has come his way, or he can just stay in the air. I don't think that he has the huge hands that help some players evade shot blockers by angling and extending, but Jalen takes the initial bump, folds, and then unfolds, as well as anyone in the 2021 NBA draft. In traffic, he's like one of those Hoberman spheres that you played with at KB Toys once in 1997 and didn't actually buy. Much of this controlled contortion is working towards his right hand. Green can finish with his left, but against significant pressure, his control takes a noticeable dip. Watch him torch his man here and meet the help defender at the rim, taking the initial contact while still having the hang time and the control to shrink to avoid getting blocked and then re-extend to finish softly. These kinds of spectacular finishes are commonplace for Green. They happen all the time. 
certainly, of course, effective drivers go to another level when they're also feared as shooters. Jalen Green is a tricky player to project in this sense. At a glance, there's nothing alarming about his shot mechanics. He's typically pretty balanced. His release is pretty close to one motion in a through the chin movement that kind of reminds me of Tyrese Maxey. Jalen has always looked comfortable creating his own shot or catching and firing, eager even. His athleticism sets him up to create shots whenever he wants. That said, he's never really demonstrated that he can be a consistent knockdown shooter from three. Over the course of his time with Team USA, which has been five different events dating back to 2017, he shot about 29% on 98 total attempts. During his most recent EYBL run with Team Why Not, he shot 30.4 on 58 total attempts. The interesting thing is that that number climbed to 36.5% in the G League bubble. So, what is happening? Being the loser that I am, I decided to watch every single one of his three-point attempts in the G League bubble to see if any patterns emerged, and I do have some thoughts. Green was still very streaky. He started his season with a 6-for-25 stretch and then ended it with an 8-for-31 slog, but he did have a nice hot streak in the middle. Part of this was maturity in his selection. He cut way back on his beloved deep dribble pull-ups and shot more off the catch in the flow of the offense. The better he chose, the better he seemed to perform. He shot 25% on contested catch and shoot jumpers, and that number jumped all the way to 50% on open looks. But there's an interesting pattern among his misses. 45 of Jalen Green's 54 missed threes were of two varieties. 21 were back rim, and 24 were front rim. Only three were side rim, and two were like me at the Walmart. In and out, and three just hit the backboard. What I'm getting at is this could be seen as an encouraging detail. My best guess is that Jalen Green is dealing with some funkiness and how smoothly he generates power when he loads up into his shot. Maybe it's a case of adjusting to a deeper three-point line, but another clue for me is how comfortable he looks when he boomerangs the energy of hopping as he catches the ball and then hopping again as he goes into his shot. His touch isn't bad at all, and his shot and arc look noticeably better in those situations as opposed to shooting with no momentum after catching it and holding it for a beat. If you speculate that he gets stronger in his lower body in the coming years, if you assume that he continues to take shots that make sense for his efficiency, and if you consider his free throw percentage, 82.9% in the G League, it's sensible to think that Jalen could become a semi-dependable, if not reasonably good shooter in the NBA. Green is not what I would consider to be an instinctive or advanced playmaker, but I also wouldn't characterize him as selfish or lacking feel. In terms of technique, he's not much of a live dribble or ambidextrous one-handed passer. He doesn't throw many whip-skip passes to the weak side, and I don't think that his passing vocabulary at this point will blow anybody's hair back. And still, if you look at Green's total sample, G League and beyond, I do think that he's shown growth and willingness in this area. Now, the Jalen Green stands are probably angrily typing and planning my demise, chanting, Can't that pizza negative. That pizza negative. Look, I'm just laying out what I see as the roadmap. Like any good bean dip or Serge Ibaka sideline outfit, there are layers to this. First is the simple understanding of when to come off of the ball in the flow of the offense. For a scorer like Green, who spent his entire life nuclear blasting people off the dribble, that idea can be a tricky recalibration as he levels up. Sometimes it's a case of allowing himself to be lured into taking on one too many defenders at once. This play is a good example. There are times when Jalen just has to recognize when he's done his job. He catches this and correctly attacks middle, and you can see that he's already drawn the extra paint defender. Kaminga is at the top of the key with his hands raised, and if Green just makes this pass while he has his forward momentum, it's likely a swing for an open three. Instead, he keeps his dribble, backpedals for a second, and allows Braxton Key to shrink his field of view, and the pass ain't there no more. On the flip side, I love plays like this one where he makes a terrific touch pass in transition. And quick sidebar, Jalen is a murderer in transition. He was in the 96th percentile of the G League. He's a demon attacking the basket. He makes good decisions. Anyway, there are situations where Green shows that he's visually mapping the floor just before he catches the ball, looking for potential easy buckets. With his ability to infiltrate the lane, I also think it's important for him to improve as a dump-off passer in traffic. It's not always pretty, but there have been some positive flashes there too. The other important layer to this is in the pick and roll, which is very much a work in progress for Green. At a glance, his efficiency numbers in this area were rough if you just take them at face value. He generated .538 points per possession on about 4.3 possessions per game. Still, I think that number can be misleading, and it did vary in the way that teams would 
outplay him. When teams would soft hedge against Jalen, he's demonstrated that he can make this read and hit the roller. Watch him come off of the screen and take a single dribble to force the screen defender to play him, and then boom, he hits the rolling Isaiah Todd. When teams drop against him, I'd love to see Green cultivate some patience and some expanded scoring in this area. Much of Green's self-created offense to this point has been either turning the corner and going to the rim, which works, or pulling up for that 15 to 18 footer, which is a shot that he has not to this point made with any consistency. Green also very rarely takes floaters or runners. These kinds of struggles are not the end of the world, and they aren't unique developmental challenges. The strength aspect of this is going to be critical. It's the one variable that'll enable nearly every area of concern to improve. It'll help his steadiness and decision making off the bounce when he's navigating traffic. It'll set his shooting mechanics up to be cleaner. It'll allow him to attack the rim and inflate his foul line production. And it'll help him be a more physically imposing presence guarding the ball. Green's offensive profile does fit with players like Zach Levine, Victor Oladipo, Bradley Beal, but he's leaner than all of those players. Frame wise, he's probably closer to the Jeremy Lambs or the Malik Monks of the world. Now, defensively, I don't expect Jalen Green to be a top-level, multi-purpose shutdown wing who can guard big shooting forwards and speedy guards in the same possession. He's just not big enough to do that, but I do think that he has the chance to be an above-average defender. Let's start with the obvious. The athleticism gives Jalen some corrective tools that give him a chance to get back in any play. With even a single step, he can get way up to contest a shot, and lately it's been refreshing to see him improve his overall focus on that side of the ball. He's high-motored, and even though he was targeted by some of the more physically mature drivers in the G League who seem to have very little trouble finishing through him, Green clearly showed some competitive resolve and frequently fought back. Once that effort collides with better schematic familiarity, I expect him to make some major strides. Is Jalen Green better than Evan Mobley and or Jalen Suggs? Could end up being the real wager of this draft. He is the kind of upside that can make a conservative GM look stupid years from now. And all we can really do is consider those impressive glimpses that we've seen and then do our best to read the person steering the ship. Radical self-belief is a requirement for players at the top of the NBA, and Jalen seems to have that. He did say that he should be compared to Kobe, but that has to be balanced with some self-reflection and motivation to keep getting better. Jalen is aware of what his critics say about him, and it's clear that he has filed that away. I know a lot of people don't think I could pass and I can only score. I'm too small to play defense, like a lot of things. I have yet to hear something about Jalen Green that would suggest to me that he isn't absolutely consumed with basketball and with getting better. I can pretty easily envision him as a player who takes reps on and off the ball, hitting shots and a attacking closeouts to get in the lane and draw fouls, and then guard the ball on the other end of the floor. If he shoots in the mid to low 30s from three, stays an inefficient creator, and gets targeted defensively by bigger and stronger wings, he still gives enough to be a good player, but it would narrow his chances to be a star. Assuming everything that we've discussed swings positive, the high outcome for Jalen Green is probably somewhere in the top 25 to 40 players in the league, flirting with all-star status when he hits his prime in that 25 to 29 range. In the stiff competition of today's NBA, that's quite a player. And if a team at the top of the draft believes in that possibility, he's a worthy gamble. Either way, because I'm confident about his work ethic and his tools, I can see a future where Jalen Green contributes to winning. And that, folks, is the point. Let me know if you agree.